the importance of it is that with mobile, social access via mobile increases the speed in which information and therefore influence moves. And you can see the effect of that on societies, you can see the effect of that with certain governments in certain parts of the world, and of course you can see the effect of that in business. That will lead to, and, and, and will continue to lead to, a, an increase in, in how much information moves and how quickly information moves. And, but we're only halfway done with this social networking era. The next half is where things are going to get really interesting. We start to really use the power of the social networks in more interesting ways. But we're going to come back to that at the end. To start with, we're going to talk about technology. We're going to start by trying to predict the technology that's likely to emerge in the next five years. The technology uh, across many different areas. And to do that, we need to work out what drives technology. What drives technology is us. Not bored people with glasses that wear strange jackets. But, the, but, the, but us as individuals, us as humanity, if we decide not to buy something as a technology, it doesn't get created. So we're in the driving seat. The question is, what's driving us? Have you ever thought about that? What drives evolution? So it's not exactly a small question. The best way of thinking about it, from my perspective, is what would stop us evolving? What would satisfy us? If you could sit in a situation where you could be in everywhere in the world in one go, we had the ability to be everywhere, with all information connected to every individual. If you were in that state, trying to imagine that state, you wouldn't necessarily need to evolve yourself any further. So perhaps that's what's driving us. Perhaps we're driving to that state of kind of abundance, an abundance of, to be able to be with everything, with everyone, everywhere. And perhaps any technology that works somehow unshackles us and allows us to move one step further to that state of abundance. It's quite predictive if you look retrospectively, if you look at any technology that's worked and assess it against that paradigm, it makes sense. Even things like SMS. Remember when SMS first came out and people were so surprised that 160 characters, you know, just typing, in, 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 typing text messages could be so um, prolifically used. But of course, if you use this paradigm, it makes sense. That gave us, text messaging gave us near instantaneous communication on the move. It was a real quantum leap forward. So we've used that paradigm to look at technologies that will emerge from these different areas, infrastructure, interface, and internet. Let's look at infrastructure to start with. What's really important is the laying down of fibre to the home. That's a really important development that's going to happen over the next five years. Uh, South Korea and Japan are leading the way with 55 and 35% penetration, um, respectively. Uh, outside of Asia, it's, it's low. It's less than 5% of homes have fibre to the home. But by 2016, most markets will have close or just over 50% penetration, which will give them speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. The average speed at the moment is about 5. Added to that will be 4G, long-term evolution, or, or, or WiMAX. That will give, give us speeds, eventually give the, the speeds that's always been promised to us of up to 50 megabits per second. Now, these two things are really important, because they're going to allow us to actually have more of our access happen, uh, come from the cloud. The cloud will be used for storage, as we all know, but also for computation, driven by the likes of Google with Docs and Chromebook and, and the Apple iCloud. Um, the cloud will allow us to do all our computation will be done on the cloud, and our devices will simply be looking glasses onto the, onto the, the same content. Interface is where it starts to get more observable. OLEDs, organic light emitting diodes, they're, they're effectively screens that don't require a backlight, so they can be flexible and translucent. They will start to change the living room. Our TVs will gradually, over the next five years, start to be OLED screen TVs as the price comes down. We'll also start to have Ultra HD, which is up to almost 50 times the definition of current um, uh, uh, definition, high definition TV. And at that point there, it's actually the, the, the screens themselves become almost to, uh, to the point where they exceed the resolution of the human eye. So it actually enables us to start linking walls together, and actually walls would disappear and connect to other rooms. Still, by 2016, very few people will have those because the prices will be too high. What they will have will be connected TVs. Uh, TV screens represent the next biggest surge in connectable devices, according to IHS Screen Digest. And that's beyond um, uh, smartphones and tablets. Um, close to half of all TVs in developed markets will have some form of internet connection by 2016. And that will open the door to m new TV card media owners, right? So Google's YouTube could quite easy at that point there, could, the conditions would be right for them to bid for major properties, such as the English Premier League. Once enough people have uh, FTTH connection and enough people have uh, connected TVs, that's when you'll start to see the environment change. More interesting than that, though, we'll start to see embedded content. So we're watching TV 
as usual, but when you, when uh, anything that appears in the TV, you'll be able to click on it or, or in some way interact with it to find out more information, to get a hidden layer. This hidden layer is already being used by YouTube in its basic form, it's called hotspotting. You can, you can click on different things. That will definitely emerge in the TV sphere and allow us to put much more information around any of the products and services that, that we actually uh, are, are watching. We'll also be able to buy. So not just find out more information, but buy, buy there and then. It's already been termed T-commerce, this. And by 16, we think it'll be close to a $15 billion global industry. It's a new form of commerce, buying straight off of the TV experience. That won't really be the main driver of TV, though. The main driver will be socialisation. 28% of people want to watch TV with their social networks already. A third of smartphone owners are using their phones whilst watching TV. So expect TVs to be connected up, um, have social overlays, and be using our, our secondary device, our tablets or our smartphones, to engage with the content on TV as we watch it.